Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Okay, so solving systems of equations of, what we're going to focus on right now is systems of equations with two variables, and also they're going to be all linear. So we have these two methods to solve by elimination and substitution. So let's just recall how to do each method, and then um, you'll be able to use what method you like unless it specifies. So elimination eliminates a variable. You'll pick a variable y or x, and you're going to eliminate it. So how you're going to eliminate it is you need them to be opposites, exact opposites, so that when you add straight down and combine your uh, equations, it gets rid of that variable. Now you can only change, um, you can change a function, not a function, sorry, yeah, any, well, yeah, we can change an equation um, by timesing by some value because that would not change the solution. Think about it. If we were to solve something, if we had a 2 on the outside, would that change anything? No, we have the same solution. So do you guys see that's why we're not changing the problem by timesing by a 2? All right, so for example, so you can pick, do you want to get rid of y or x? I personally see these are already opposites, so I'm going to get rid of y personally, but it wouldn't matter. So I'm going to times this by 4, and then I'm going to write, write down the new equation underneath here. So then I would have now 8x, and now I have minus 4y equals 20. So now what you'll do is add straight down, so you have 9x's. Your y's add to be 0, which is what we want, equals 27. So now easily we can solve for x. x equals 3. So now here's the thing, guys. When we're solving these, what we're technically doing is, this is a line, this is a line. We, if we were to graph both these lines, where they are equal is the intersection point. The intersection point is the solving. We're solving where they're equal, where they intersect. So it is at an xy point. So our answers are xy points. So it's 3 comma, we don't know what y is. So we can find y now by plugging it back into the top or bottom equation. It doesn't matter. So let's just plug it into the top, sure. So that would be 2 times 3 minus y equals 5. So then we get 6 minus y equals 5. Subtract 6. Negative y equals negative 1. Therefore, y equals 1. So 3, 1 is where these lines are equal, where they intersect, and that's the solution. Everybody go with that? Okay, that was the process of elimination. Substitution is when you take a one of the equations, solve for a variable, and then plug it in, substitute it into the other equation wherever that variable is. So let's take our top equation and solve for y. So we subtract 2x. So now I have this true statement. y is equal to, I'm going to do mx plus b form, so negative 2x plus 1. They are equal. So now what I can do is take and plug in negative 2x plus 1 wherever there's a y, substituting it in. So I still have 3x, and I have plus 4 times, instead of y, I have negative 2x plus 1 equals 14. And now do you guys see how it's only x's in my equation? So I would distribute, so I have 3x minus 8x plus 4 equals 14. So that's negative 5x plus 4 equals 14. That's negative 5x equals 10, therefore x equals negative 2. So we'd say my solution is negative 2 comma something. So now we'll take negative 2 and plug it back into top or bottom. So I'll just do it to the top. 2 times negative 2 plus y equals 1. Negative 4 plus y equals 1, so y equals 5. Questions on that? Okay. What was that? It's the You mean one more method? Yeah. Graphing. Oh. We get solved by substitution, elimination, or graphing. Okay, so do you guys need another elimination or substitution example? Most classes haven't. Okay, cool. So I'll skip these next two. <clears throat> I do want to quickly show you graphing. You're not, you don't take notes. Just watch. We all know how to graph lines. I just want to show you how it looks. So you, if you're ever going to solve by graphing, you need your equations to be y equals x. Because otherwise, how can you graph it? So we would take our top equation, get it so it's y equals, so I subtract x, then I have negative y is equal to negative x plus 4, divide by negative 1, so now my equation is y is equal to x minus 4, so watch me graph that. I'm going down 4, then remember how lines work, slope is 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. There is my line. Uh, my second line will solve for y equals, subtract 2x, that's 
what's next? So we have y is equal to negative 2x plus 2. So I'm going to go up to 2. Because my slope is negative 2 over 1, I go down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Do I even need to keep going? No, we see the intersection point. That's the solution where they intersect right there. So what x my point? 2, negative 2. Just solving by graphing. So we've just done the same thing three times just by different methods. Now I do need to remind you of when we get no solution versus infinite solutions, all real numbers. So let's talk about each of those. So this example you're going to see ends up having no solution. So let's go through and pretend like we didn't know. So we would get rid of x or y. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to get rid of y because 2 and 3 are smaller than 8 and 12. Yes. So we're going to times this by what? 3 and times this by 2. So now let's write down our new equation. So that would be 24x minus 6y equals 15. And on bottom, I would get negative 24x plus 6y equals 14. Now notice in this one, when we add straight down, it gets rid of y and x. So isn't that 0? So now we add up those, we get 0 equals 29. Well, that's not a true statement. We couldn't solve. 0 equals 29 is not a true statement. Therefore, there is no solution. So what's going to happen is, what you're going to see is what Dylan just said. If you were to solve this one by graphing, what would happen is you'd have two parallel lines. So that would be no solution. Does that make sense, everyone? Okay, cool. Now, what if the variable cancels out and it is a true statement? Then it's going to be all real numbers. But we've got to remember, we can't just write all real numbers. I'll explain why. And this is the one you really need to focus on and pay attention to. Okay, so let's get rid of either y or x. It doesn't matter. So let's get rid of x. Okay, so we'll times this one by negative 4. And then I'll times this one by 3. Okay, distribute, distribute, distribute. So that would be negative 12x plus 24y equals negative 48. Distribute, distribute, distribute. So that'd be positive 12x minus 24y equals 48. Now in this one, when we add straight down, we get zero equals zero. Is that a true statement? Yes. Therefore, the answer is all real numbers, but you can't write that. That's not how you write it. All real numbers. Now that what that means is we have an infinite number of solutions on a certain line. Now think about why. Because if I asked you to solve this one by graphing, what would have happened was this. You would have had a line on top of that exact same line. So yes, guys, think about this. Any x, y point that falls on the line is a solution, yeah? But it has to be on that line. So yes, I can put anything in for x, but I cannot put anything in for y. It is plug in x, I get out this line for y. Our output is the line. So you have to write this y value as the line. So what line is it? Well, go back to an original and get it into y equals form. Because then you can replace it as a function of x. Does that make sense? So go to the top and solve for y. So we would have 3x uh, minus 6y equals 12. Subtract 3x. So you have negative 6y is equal to negative 3x plus 12. Divide by negative 6. So now I get y is equal to 1 half x minus 2. That's that line right there. So we'd say we can plug in anything for x, but our y values will always be on the 1 half x minus 2 line. You have to write it like that. Okay. That's a what? No, it makes complete sense. Okay, so... Um, so the question is for you, don't get freaked out on, if you check the back of the book and they go t, and then they put, like if they put a t variable instead of x, it's still a variable, right? Just different variable. Same answer though, right? If they had t, 1 half t minus 2. So just so you know, they might put a t in there. Okay. I think they like to write it as time. I don't know. Okay, so let's read this story problem. We do have to remember distance, rate, and time, but luckily they are pretty straightforward, especially compared to what we did in 1010, because in 1010, our brains were not so developed as they are now. So this says, a woman rows a boat upstream for, from one point on a river to another four miles away in 1.5 hours. The return trip traveling with, with the current takes only 45 minutes. How fast does she row relative to the water, and what is the speed of the current? So everybody think about it in real life, okay? So obviously we can read, see by the problem, there's distance, there's rate, and there's time. So
So you have to remember, distance is equal to rate times time. That's a formula you have to know. So now here's the thing we have to take into consideration. Think about it in real life. If you are on a boat and you're going on the stream, you're going to be going 10 miles, let's say you're going 10 miles an hour. Now if the stream is pushing against you at 3 miles an hour, you're only going 7 miles an hour. It's slowing you down. Now on the way back though, you're going 10 miles an hour and now the 3 is with you, so now you're going 13 miles an hour. So you have to take into consideration our rate is the speed of the current and the speed of the boat. So let's set up a distance rate and time problem for the trip there. What's the distance? Four is equal to our rate the way there. Was the stream pushing with her or against her? Against her because it says upstream, right? So take the speed of the boat. Think about it in real life. How fast is this boat going? The speed of the boat minus the speed of the current. Want to be pushing against it. So that's your rate. You have y minus x. What's the time she did it in? 1.5 hours. Okay, good. Now let's do a, an equation for the way back. What's our distance? 4 is equal to our rate. Yep, y plus x now, because now the stream's pushing her quicker. And she gets it done in 45 minutes. You've got to stay consistent. Hours, this is minutes. We would convert it to hours. So how do you convert that? You'd say, well, 45 minutes out of 1 hour, which is 60 minutes, is equal to... 0.75, everybody. So we would do 0.75. Now here's personally, to, in my opinion, the easier way. You could just distribute and do decimals. Not a big deal. Right? Mm -hmm. Everyone agree? Because you have a calculator. But I just, if I didn't want to use a calculator, I would rather have it in fraction form. So it's just up to you guys as a class. Would you rather me leave it as a decimal or put it as a decimal. fraction? Fraction. Okay. Most people said decimal. So times that through, times that through. So let's write out our new equation. 4 is equal to 1.5y minus 1.5x. Now we distribute that and that through. So 4 is equal to 0.75y um, plus 0.75x. So now we're just going to solve by elimination. So you would pick a variable to uh, eliminate. Which one? X, because they're already opposites, would probably be easiest. Not that there is a right or wrong answer there. So I would times this entire top by 0.75, wouldn't I? Mm -hmm. yeah. Times this entire bottom one by 1.5. So distribute, distribute, distribute. So 4 times 0.75 is 3. 3 is equal to 1.5 times 0.75. Oh, yeah, it is. 4 minus x. So 
So subtract 4, what do we get? <coughs> and then we divide by a negative, so 1.3... Okay, we're going to go... Oh, it can't be negative. So it's 1.3, you said? Okay, yeah, but we're going to just go with it. Okay. All right, fractions would have been easier, but it's fine. No, it's not wrong. It's just rounded. Yeah, it's just rounded. So fractions would have been easier, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Next problem, let's read this one. This is the one that people do tend to have a little bit of a harder time with. So let's actually think a little bit. So it says, a venture fortifies wine. A venture fortifies wine that contains 10% alcohol by adding 70% alcohol solution to it. So guys, think about what this is saying. Uh, we have some, I guess, like bucket type thing. And it's, it's inputting wine, right? And it's inputting also alcohol solution. Solution. Does everybody kind of see what I'm saying? All right, so now it's going to contain 10%. Um, it says wine that contains 10%, so this contains 0 0.10, correct? Mm -hmm. Alcohol, and how much does the solution? This is 0.7, okay, and then that's going inside here. So now it says, okay, sorry, the resulting mixture has an alcoholic strength, so in here, what's the strength? 0.16% of stuff, right? Now it says, and it fills up 1,000 one liter bottles. So we can then pour this into 1,000 one liter bottles. Now it says how many liters of the wine and of the alcohol solution does the venture use? So X is the amount of wine that's going in and Y would be the amount of solution going into this venture. All right, so let's set up two true statements. Isn't it true that my X, the amount of wine, plus the amount of solution is going to go into 1,000 bottles. So that's my first true statement. If there's two variables, we know there has to be two true statements. So second true statement obviously has to do with percents, guys. So what would be a true statement? One, yep, point one zero x plus point seven y's. Is this point seven? Yep. Equals. Yes, now that's where a lot of people want to, that's where people make their error and that's what people want to do. They want it to say equals 0.16. But isn't this going to, it's going to be equal to 16% of 1,000. Because this is an amount, correct? X is our amount, guys. You see how the X doesn't stand for percent. So you can't have it equal a percent. It has to equal amount. So uh, we would take 0.16 and times it by 1,000, which is 160. So there's your two true statements. So now, do you guys oh, need me to... So basically saying that 16% of this thing makes 160 years old, right? Yes. Okay, got it. Wait, but... But that, and then we have to do... Okay. So now we would just do elimination or substitution. Yeah. Because it says right here, a venture fortifies wine that contains 10% alcohol by adding it to a 70% alcohol solution. The resulting mixture has an alcoholic strength of 16%. So we just got to make sure like you stay consistent. So right here was amount, 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 percent, percent, percent. But it's percent of a number. Because these are numbers. If you plug in a variable for X, it's you're plugging in a number. Like how many, how many amounts, how much wine, and how much, and how much solution. So you can't have this come out to be a percent. But it's percent of an amount. All right. So just keep that in mind. You'll you'll get it with practice. I, I get that sometimes it's kind of hard to think about. So I do not probably need to do elimination at this point. Do you guys feel like you understand how to do elimination? You would times the top one by negative 0 0.10. Add straight down. Solve. Okay, cool. All right, that's the end of 10.1. Let's go on to 10.8, which is also very quick. So the nice thing is, is 10.8 is the exact same lesson we just learned. It's just the only difference is it's not going to be linear equations necessarily. Like those were both two linear equations. Now we're just going to have different types of equations, but same idea. So with this one, we have when does x squared plus y squared equal 100 equal intersect with 3x minus y equals 10. It's saving solve. Solve the system of equations here. Now this one we're going to solve by substitution. Here's why we could not do elimination. Everybody listen to this. If we were trying to eliminate, we would need to have both of these be x squared or both of these be y squared, right? Yeah. 
You cannot times by a y, or you have changed the problem. If we times by y, won't a solution be zero? That wasn't originally a solution. When we times by a whole number, it doesn't change solutions, but you can't times by a variable. So the only way to do this one is by substitution. So I would take the bottom equation and solve for y, get y all by itself, and then we can plug it into the other equation. So subtract 3x, divide by negative 1. Divide by negative one. So then y is equal to positive 3x minus 10. I rewrote it in standard form. Does that go too fast for anybody? Whoa. Yeah? Oh, wait, so then when we put it into y, we have to square that. Yep, so now we're going to take this and plug it into the other equation wherever there's a y, replacing it there. So now my true statement on top is still x squared plus, and then we have a, instead of y, we now have 3x minus 10 squared equals 100. How do we solve quadratics? We need to have it in standard form and equal to zero. Do you agree? So we're going to have to multiply out this 3x minus 10 times 3x minus 10. So I'm going to show my work here. x squared, we still have x squared from this x squared. Now multiplying this out, 3x times 3x, 9x squared. Then we have a minus 30x. Minus 30x again, plus 100, and then still equals 100. So combine like terms. We have 10x squareds now. Minus 60x's plus 100 equals 100. So get it set equal to 0. Subtract 100. So that's gone. So we have 10x squared minus 60x equals 0. Now guys, at this point, when solving the quadratic, you will solve by factoring. Now notice this one's factoring is going to be easy, right? Greatest common factor. But there are times when you're going to get to this point and you're going to have to solve by actually A times C and adds up to B factoring like we know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, let's solve this one. So pull out a what? 10x. And then we'll divide by 10x, divide by 10x. So then left would be x minus 6. So now we can solve. Set each of those equal to 0 and solve. So x equals 0, x equals 6. So this has two intersection points, everybody. But remember, these are points of intersection. So you'd have to go back and say, I have an x, y point, I have an x, y point. My x value was 0, my other x value it intersected was 6. So now to find the y value, don't you just plug it into the top or bottom? Let's just plug it into the bottom. Sure, okay, so that would be 3 times 0 minus y equals 10. So then they have negative y equals 10. So then it's the bulk, right? So that would be negative 10. negative 10. Now let's go plug in 6. So that would be 3 times 6, plugging it in right here, 3 times 6 minus y equals 10. 18 minus y equals 10. Subtract 18. Negative y equals negative 8. So y equals 8. And so if we would have solved this one by graphing, we would have had a circle. This is a circle. We would have had a line. So it would have touched twice in this particular problem. Because people were asking me, they were like, I'm kind of confused from last hour. Like, I don't get why it's two. So let me just show you a rough sketch of what this would look like. This is a circle. <clears throat> I know, huh? <laughs> and then we have a line. Do you guys see how it touches in two places? Oh, yeah. So it's just two intersection points. We're just not solving by graphing. All right, so let's now use elimination. Well, the reason we can use elimination is because notice we have x squareds two x squared, so they're both x squared, the top and bottom. So x squared, x squared, so it'd be nice, because now we can eliminate, because we can times by just numbers to eliminate x. We could eliminate y if you'd rather, but uh, what do you guys think? We've All day we've eliminated x, but we can eliminate y. Which one do you think? Y. Let's do y? y. Ooh, you're feeling daring. No, no it's, it's the exact same amount of easiness. It is. Yeah, true, you guys always pick them. No, you guys like to pick the, like, rebel, like what everyone doesn't do, which isn't a bad thing. Do you guys want to, let's just solve for y. Okay. So we would times this by negative 2, I'm hearing, yep. times this by 7. Okay, yep. let's go ahead and distribute here. That would be 21x squared plus 14y equals, I don't know that right off, 26 times 7. 182. <coughs> negative 2 times that. Negative 10x squared. Minus 14y equals negative 6. So let's add 
Let's write down and see what equation we're looking at here. 21x squared minus 10x squared is? 11x squared, you're right. My y's are gone. 11x squared equals? No. Okay, guys, so then from here, divide by 11. So we have x squared equals 16. So then solve for x. Square root both sides. Plus or minus 4. Ooh, good. You didn't remember. When solving and taking a square root, you need a plus or minus. So we have a 4. We have a negative 4. So now we'll just go plug it in. So plug it into the top or bottom. I'm going to go with bottom. So then we have 5 times 4. Oh, that's a 4. 4 squared plus 7y equals 3. So then what would that be? 5 times 16 plus 7y equals 3. 80 plus 7y equals 3. Subtract 80. 7y is equal to negative 77. So y is equal to negative 11. I thought you were like running to throw up. <laughs> So I wasn't making a scene. Then say you're being an idiot, so go sit down. <laughs> you just wanted some time. So negative 11. If I plug in <laughs> negative 4 right here, won't it be the same solution? Yes. Yes. So we have negative 11, negative 11. Awesome. Yeah, good point. So if we were to graph this, there would be a parabola and a parabola. So there could be like two intersection points, okay? Great questions though. Okay, okay, okay. We're actually really close to being done with the lesson here. We are. Okay, I just want to show you one by graphing real quick and then um, we're literally pretty much, we are done after this. So, solve for, so if you're going to ever solve by graphing, you want it in y equals. So I would subtract x squared. So then I have negative y is equal to negative x squared plus 2 divided by negative 1. So y is equal to x squared minus 2. Now, guys, if you didn't know how to graph this, then make a little xy chart and plug in values. Plug in 0. 0 squared minus 2. Negative 2. Plug in a 1. 1 squared minus 2. Plug in 2. 1. You guys, 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. Plug in 3. 9 minus 2 is 7. Okay, we need more points, so let's plug in negative 1. Negative one. Plug in negative two, we get out two. Plug in negative three, we get out seven. Okay, so let's just say that we want it to graph like that. So zero down two, over one down one, over negative one down one, over two up two, over negative two up two, over three up seven, over negative three up seven. There's our quadratic. Now we just need to graph our line. So let's get it in mx plus b form. Subtract 2x. Divide by negative 1. So y is equal to positive 2x plus 1. So let's watch me graph that. Um, here's my y-intercept at 1. Up 1, 2 over 1. Up 1, 2 over 1. Up 1, 2 over 1. Down 1, 2 over 1. There's our two intersection points, right? So my two solutions are... Negative, oh yeah, sorry, 3, 7 is the first one. Yep, negative 1, negative 1. Solving by graphing. Okay, so in this is my last example, and it's not even an example. I just want to test your ability. I'm going to make that stand out a little better for you. What are the solutions given that graph? Negative 2, 1, 4, 4. Negative 2, 1. 4, 4. 4, 4. So you might think that's a trick question. It's not. I just wanted to show you. People always look at this and they say, but this isn't a function. Well, no, it's not, but I didn't ask. It's two equations. We can still graph two equations. Equations can still have solutions. Does that make sense? Even though they're not, quote, a function. So just don't let anything like that throw you off. That's the end of the lesson. I want you to do just, everybody listen to my instructions. On, I don't want you to ever do, like, so freaking much homework. So listen to what is required. 
10.1 acts 10.8 do every other odd. Now here's what you do need to take into consideration. On 10.1, let's say you do every other odd and you do not come across any that have infinite solutions or no, you need to go find some. You need to practice the infinite solutions one especially and the no solutions one. So if you were like, I'm not getting one with infinite solutions, I need to practice one, go look at the answers in the back of the book and find one that looks like it has infinite solutions and then try that problem from start to end. Now, one last thing, I didn't do any examples of it, I just want to point out, is it possible for the ones we just saw, the new ones with quadratics and lines, is it possible for those to have no solution? Yes. Right? They could never touch. So it would just the same thing would happen. You'd get a not true statement when solving. What? Oh, that's like a picture of us lately. Now, here's my next question. Next question is, could I ever have with a quadratic and line infinite solutions? No. Will they ever line up perfectly? No. So, okay. Cool, cool, cool. That's my last question. Yeah, well, you could have no solutions, yes. 